Welcome to the Barbarian Hour podcast, where we conquer the impossible. The Barbarian Hour podcast is presented by Barbarian Apparel. Here is Jared Opfer and Zeb Miller. Are you ready? Shane Sparks, Mr. Nuclear Power Plant Energy himself, Mr. Matt Return. Shane Sparks, oh, yeah. I got you on the Barbarian Hour, sir. How is it going tonight, Shane? Zeb, it is fantastic and fired up to be here with you. You're one of my favorite guys in wrestling. You do a great job. So jumped at the opportunity uh, when you guys invited me to come on. Great to be here. So first things first, Shane Sparks, if you've ever watched the Big Ten Network, you will learn a ton about, I guess, Matt Returns. He does all the Matt side interviews. He works with Flow Wrestling. He works with who was, who was the game for this past weekend? You did your first college football game. Who, who were you working with this past weekend? That was for ESPN+. Plus. It was Missouri State at Oklahoma State. And the funniest thing there was, I mean, obviously, big wrestling fan, but of all the college football games that are on the schedule, to go to Oklahoma State and Stillwater, it's like you can't get the wrestling out of me. It was awesome being there. Great experience. Fantastic. So did you double up and do like, I'm doing ESPN, but I'm going to go and get, I'm going to go get my fix. I'm going to go hit the room. I'm going to see John W. I'm going to go see what Chris Perry's up to. I want to go see what the, what the pokes are doing. Did you hit the wrestling room or get in touch with any of those guys or do dinner or anything with them? I went into Gallagher, Iba Arena, went up to the wrestling room, uh, talked to uh, Zach Esposito for a little bit. I saw Chris Perry on the field uh, the day of the football game, spent some time with the uh, strength and conditioning coach. That was great meeting him. Um, but I was in Gallagher, I It was really cool because I went in there and it was dark. And I just, I love sports, Zeb, and I love arenas. I love the history. I've always thought one of the coolest things ever would be if you would take Rec Hall, Bryce Jordan Center, Carver Hawkeye Arena, Gallagher Iba, a couple of the best arenas and had those arenas all sit down with a scotch and a cigar and tell stories <laughs> about their arenas. Yeah. So I'm sitting in Gallagher, Iba, and it's quiet. In, in a few years back, I did play-by-play -play national duels, Penn State, Oklahoma State, and I believe that was the largest crowd ever inside that arena. But I just love that place, the wrestling history. I mean, you can feel it. It is palpable in those kind of places. But I just sat there. It was dark and I sat there all by myself the other day and just it was quiet and I just sat and thought man the history the stories the legends that have played basketball or wrestled in this arena it's incredible that is a Stillwater Oklahoma that's a special place the greatest NFL running back it's it's not up for debate I'm sorry I grew up a I Detroit agree. Lions fan Barry freaking Sanders was a cowboy, right? And I think yes. his kid was a cowboy and then ended up at Stanford. I think I'm right on that. I think that I'm not sure, happened. but they had Sanders and Thurman Thomas. Yes. Both of those guys they had. They're the same Both team. Of them. It's crazy. It's crazy because I don't think people really get like they've had more than just wrestling. It's it's football's oh, big yes. time there, man. Like when yes, who's coaching there right now? On the baseball team right now, Matt Holiday and Robin Ventura are, are coaching at Oklahoma State in some capacity. That's but you look at Oklahoma State, you got wrestling, football solid. The basketball team's had some really good years. The baseball team, the softball team, that's, that's a cool place. I really like Stillwater. I'm not a country music fan. I mean, I like country music in Oklahoma. Oklahoma or in Iowa, then I like country music. But that's where Garth Brooks went to school. I mean, that place has got some history. I think Toby Keith's Boomer Sooner. I think he's Boomer Sooner, I think. I, okay. I, I think he is. Hold on. Listen, if I'm wrong, people can crucify me. I'm all right with that. But I think he's <laughs> Boomer Sooner. Uh, we'll, we'll see. I might have to Google that. Uh, but, Shane, yeah, like, what was your – okay, so were you sidelines? What were you doing, actually, at the game? Were you sideline reporting? I was doing sideline reporting. Yeah, ESPN approached me a few weeks ago, had a connection there. And uh, if I'm being real honest, I mean, it's something I've always wanted to do, but probably didn't pursue it as hard as I, I should have. Uh, but it all worked out, and I'm going to 
Kansas State next week, and then I think the week after that, Kansas. So I'm looking forward to, like I said, being a sports fan. Uh, the athletic director at Kansas State is Gene Taylor. He was at North Dakota State, so I met him when I used to do the interviews at Fargo. And then he went to Iowa, University of Iowa, so I maintain that relationship. So I'm really looking forward to seeing Gene this week. And then next week, being at Kansas, I want to check out Allen Fieldhouse. I mean, those Kansas Jayhawk teams over the years, I mean, that's yeah. – I just love sports. I love – I mean, I didn't pay attention to history class when I was in school, but when it comes to sports history and arenas – that is right at my alley. So I'm, I'm looking forward to checking some of this stuff out. Wow. I, that is awesome. So the schedule moving, are we going to get Shane Spart? Is, is he going to get stolen by basketball? Jeez, oh, Pete, you're becoming, I mean, that's crazy that they're just picking you up week after week. And it's kind of like, yeah, we like your energy. Yeah, we like, we like what we got. You're polished. You got a ton of energy. You're excited about it. You're knowledgeable. Clearly you're passionate. I know you love wrestling and it's your, it's your, it's your passion. Oh, sure. I know well, Matt returns are football. your passion, right? Oh, it's third and one, you know, it's third and one on the football field, but it's, it's really a week to week thing. I mean, super, I mean, super grateful for the opportunities, but it's, I mean, it's like anything else at, at that level. I think you gotta, you gotta prove yourself. A lot of people want to do it. So, um, you know, what does it mean moving forward? I'm not sure. I hope it leads to, you know, more sports. Obviously, ESPN is, is big in wrestling. Uh, that'd be great. I love baseball. I love softball. I mean, it's just, I mean, when you can make a living doing these kind of things, it's, it's I realize how lucky I am. So we'll see, but, but nothing in any sport will get me as fired up as, you know, end of a period, 17 seconds left in a one-point match. And I, boom, I, I get tough and gritty for that mad return and finish the period on top. And, and I talked to Joe Dubuque at the Olympic trials because sometimes I wonder to myself, like, get my own head a little bit. Like, am I making that big of a deal on this? Like, I don't want to be obnoxious. I mean, everything I talk about and preach, I mean it. I mean, I don't, I don't exaggerate things. So I asked Joe Dubuque. I was with the Princeton guys. What a great group of guys, Chris Ayers, awesome, and Joe yeah. Dubuque, and Nate Jackson. We were in, in, in Fort Worth. And I asked Joe, and I've known Joe for 10 years. I'm like, Joe, do I make, you know, just give me an honest assessment. assessment. Do I make a, a too big of a deal on Matt returns? And Joe Dubuque looked at me and he goes, you don't make a big enough deal about Matt returns. He talked about the importance of him winning national titles and Matt returns. They're just so, I, I just, I think Matt returns. And it's, it's, there's a lot of things that are critical and important. But I just, I look at, I've always compared Matt returns to third and one in football. It's third and one. You got to move the sticks. You got to get tough and gritty. And I think a lot of times, obviously, technique's important. But I think that really is, uh, I, I think overused in sports is who wants it more. I think that's a situation where it's who wants it more. I got to return you. I got to have that paranoia where I got to finish the period on top. And I got to return you. I, I just think it, you beat guys on top mentally, you break guys on top mentally, crowds get into mad returns, you keep momentum heading into the next period or that next situation. I think they're huge. I mean, I've always joked with Isaac Jordan. You and I were talking about Jeff Jordan before, off air, but if I, I've always wanted to run mad return wrestling, like the Isaac Jordan mad return uh, wrestling camps, because Isaac Jordan's one of my one of the best I've ever seen. Kyle Day comes to mind, Matt Valenti. That's kind of my three-headed monster. I'm looking for one more on my Mount Rushmore Matt returns. But they're not easy. But sometimes you just, I just think it's a, an aspect of a wrestling match. You, you got to win that. You got to win the Matt return battle. You don't nearly make a big enough deal out of Matt returns because I can tell you when I was – when every year I do the Iron Man, and those kids are so high level. The high school kids are so high level, and then I I would usually like go Iron Man, and usually like a Kent State or an Edinburgh duel, right? And it was this this crazy, you know, like because you got to shift because there's no riding time in the high school, but the Iron Man is the highest level of high school in in season tournament you can get to. Yeah, and then uh, and then going to the college, and there was not a big difference between that the Iron Man. And the, you know, the whatever Kent State, whether it was Edinburgh, whoever's duel it was the next day, there wasn't that big of a shift. But the biggest thing you, you find out at the top level is, and why I think we trans, 
form and it transmits into MMA so well is we control people. Control. Yeah, that's my love folk style. Oh, and think about this. It's bone jarring. It's joint jarring. It's, and yep. it's just like you, you're squeezing somebody's guts. You're lifting them up. They're <laughs> landing flat. And Dustin Kilgore, I would put on your other – we sure, can have him as your fourth. Sure. Because that yep. guy was brutal with mat returns. He was really good at mat returns, really good at kicking people in the shins. But his mat returns were brutal, and he was mean. He was physical, and it was just like he just wanted to take your soul with the mat return. And that's you the biggest thing. Yeah. Can I steal that? Can I steal that, They want to take your soul, man. You they want to mat returns. You take somebody's soul. Yeah, and the fantastic. other thing is you really find out what kind of man you are. You find I'm telling yes, you right you now. Do. You feel out what you figure out what type of person you are, what kind of man you are, how much character you have, how tough you are, because that's a big drill with George Bergman, our, our coach where, from my high school, George Bergman. He coached J.D. Bergman. He coached all my brothers okay. and I. He coached Ian Miller, my nephew. And, and that they do a thing. It's called belly bump when they do it. But it's like it's a mat return. And you got to do it. That's every day. Every day that's a drill to warm up. You got you to gotta, you gotta belly bump someone. You got to belly bump 10 this way, 10 that way. And you shelf them over your knee. And you really find out what kind of person you are and what kind of man you are. You learn a lot about yourself. And, like, I can go back and look at some of these things where I rant on, like, old flow wrestling videos when I'm just, I'm like, oh, man, he's trying to steal a soul right out of his body with that mat return. You are, he is, <laughs> fi you are finding out what kind of person you are. And it's, it's demoralizing, Shane. It's demoralizing. You just We've can't all get away. Oh, you can't get away. And, 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 and Zeb, this stuff's exciting, but you've never heard me ever say, like, oh, it's real easy. It's not easy. Oh. It, it takes a lot of commitment and effort yes. with fatigue. It's not easy, but I, I love the line. That is how you take somebody's soul. That's the coolest That's line right I've ever heard. Body, right dude. Yeah. But listen, here's the other thing. There, there's technique behind it. You have to have your hips lower yes. than the person yes. you're lifting. And when a guy's trying to turn and cut or hip mm -hmm. heist, it's hard to pick them up because you got to suck them in, right? And then you got to get your hips under them. But, man, Dake, I mean, is there a more oh. explosive athletic freak than Kyle Dake? I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe yeah, the guy I, from Dagestan who caught him yeah. in the, the quarterfinals of the Olympics. Yeah. But, you know, they were, he got gamed Dake a little was bit. Unbelievable. You know what I loved about Dake, Zeb? This is probably why from a, from a, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, mat management, you know, mat awareness standpoint. What I loved about Kyle Dake, and I just – you talked about it before – what kind of man you are, what kind of attitude you have. Kyle Dake, for example, guy's in a wrestling match and he's winning nine nothing, for example, and there are seven seconds left off a restart or whatever it is. It's like you can, he can get away from you. You're still going to win nine to one. It's still a major decision. He, he'd never do that. Like no. Kyle Dake no. never gives you anything for free ever. And that's why I just, I love, I mean, we talk about all the stuff in sports, keep the pressure, run through the finish line, those kind of concepts. And I've never seen anybody in wrestling execute him like he does. And no. it's not easy. He's so skilled. Yeah. But his, I mean, he just, you talk about people that want to dominate every second. He's able to, he's literally able to wrestle, you know, seconds. <laughs> it's like, I'm going to win the next five seconds. I'm going to win the next five seconds after that. And then the next five seconds. So it's incredible. So competitive. He's competitive. And what's wild about him is that, you know, the guy, the, whatever, where's the guy from Belarus? Where's the guy? Belarus. It was, it was a Dagestan guy, right? The guy who we lost. The, to. the guy you should at the Olympics, a, Ru a Russian transplant, right? The guy was game and was ready. Like was waiting for him to go to his body so he could counter. Cause those guys are really good when they can get you to a, a hip put you to a hip sure. seatbelt position. And he's so good at, at picking people up. And, you know, like what he did to Nolf with the Olympic trials was just a foul. Oh, right? I, mean, I was waiting for the police to come in and yes. take him away in handcuffs after the felony. <laughs> right? And, it, and it's just like how he picks you up and puts you down. And oh. uh, and those guys are so tough because he's done it to Imar. He's done it to freaking Nolf. What that guy does to really good dudes. And I think he'll go to Worlds. And I think he'll take that guy's soul from him and, and, and make a point of it. And then he, you know, he's got to set something up with Cedicoff. 
Sidikov's the champ. He's the guy. You know, there's no sure. nothing taken away from Sidikov because he dominated that guy. But, yep. but when you look at it, I think the biggest thing with Kyle Dake is his mad IQ. That, that exactly. His mad, it's, I wouldn't even know. His mad IQ, Zeb, is so good. Yeah. If you said to me, give me who's second, I wouldn't have a name for you. But hold on. I mean, hold on. I, listen, hold on. The most underrated mad IQ, I think, in the, on the planet right now is, hold on. You're, don't get mad at me here. Okay. okay. The Russian tank has a very high mad IQ. Oh, sure. Did you Absolutely. see how he wrestled Kyle Snyder? Did you see how he got a lead and then coasted? Did you see yeah. yep. how he put him, he scored early on, got up big, was threatening lifts, but like, mm -hmm. he, you know, he didn't have a takedown. He didn't have a takedown. Yep. He, didn't, he didn't score a takedown. Right? So it's just like, that guy's unreal. You yeah, know, the Russian is. tank is the, I think, you know, David Taylor, obviously super high mad IQ. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, but, like, for a guy to do that and to beat Kyle Snyder and not score a takedown in the Olympic final, and he, he kind of gamed him. He kind of gamed him with, like, these little arm hooks, leg hooks. Remember he back hooked him and pinned him? Remember that? I like freestyle wrestling, Zeb. But, like, talking about this match right now, and it was great. Not taking anything away from Sidikoff. It's, it's freestyle wrestling. He did a phenomenal job. But I'll take folk style every day and twice on Sunday. I want to see guys Agreed. battle. And control. I mean, and it's, I like it all. Uh, and I don't, you know, somebody likes freestyle better. Hey, that's, that's fine. I just, I, I think they're different. And I just, I just like so many elements of, of folk style a little bit better. Sad July of though, the Russian tank. Uh, we just, I, I don't think what he did. And I agree with you. You're right. Cause Kyle Snyder wrestled folk style and he's a folk style guy and, and you know we love him because he's a three-time NCAA champ four-time finalist Olympic gold medalist we love him because he's yep. an American but I've never seen I, I never thought like that coach Sanderson could get gamed like that so hey I just I gotta give I gotta give him a ton of credit I gotta give now with that being said though Zeb, I don't think him, that dude. Sag alive is he is he wrestling at worlds I, I thought uh, I saw that he I don't know. He probably won't. I'd be surprised if he did. But if he did, you mentioned uh, Kale. I I would very much like to see those guys wrestle again because I think I think Snyder's camp would make the adjustments. I'm not saying you beat them, but it'd be different. It'd be different. I mean, I've I've read that. We've all read that book a million times. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but. Sad Jelayev is the standard in the world right now. He's the pound for pound best guy. Sure. Um, Sidikov, obviously, you get, you know, you gotta, he's in the conversation. He's so uh, slick. Oh he's so God. slick. Gable he's, I mean, he's, he, he was, I would use the word in describing Sidikov. He's pretty. Yeah. I mean, oh, his yeah. skills are pretty. It's so like, slick. what? So yeah, slick. So slick. Like, unbelievable. And then obviously, Gable, what Gable did was unprecedented. I guess, you know, I want to get your take on this. I think he's coming back and he's going to wrestle 15 matches for the Gophers. I think every time you have him, every time there's a home meet, it's going to be a sellout, um, you know, depending on restrictions or whatever. But even if it's not a sellout, imagine the TV views. Imagine Shane Sparks talking post-match to Gable Stevenson about, I mean, he's he's doing mat returns in the Olympics, dude. He's picking these guys up, throwing them around. It's crazy. I I will say this, Zeb. I have always been so careful on being a prisoner of the moment or making crazy predictions because nine times out of ten, they blow up in your face, and I don't like being wrong. But the one guy that I have gone all in on is Gable Stevenson, and it, it, I can't believe it because I'm not a big heavyweight guy. But what, I've never seen people do things like he does on a wrestling mat with his, with his size, speed, strength, power, all that. I would agree with you. I, I used to think a while back, like, there's no way that he's coming back. I kind of agree. I, I would tend to agree with you right now. Abbreviated schedule, picking, you know, supposedly just signing with the WWE. I'm not, I'm not sure if he did or not or what that looks like. But I could see him coming back. I think he's back. I, I hope hold he comes on. back because 
I told you, one of my one of my best friends, college teammates, he's Dolph Ziggler. Yes. And and, and he lived that he lived that life, man. And you gotta understand, you know, like he'd get us tickets. And his was like when he was in that early grinder stage of it, that early just like seven days a week. He was in this thing called the Spirit Squad. I went and saw him at the, the Toledo Sports Arena, which has been knocked down since. He drove down that morning from Detroit, and they would do a lot more dark shows, I think, then. You know what a dark – do you know what dark shows are? They don't televise everything. They would do shows. They'd do sure. house shows. they do dark shows. They And then they're dark – like, a lot of the guys beforehand, the NXT guys, do dark shows. Now, it's changed. I mean, I'm not like a Mark. A Mark is like a, someone, a fan who believes it. Um, clearly, what they do is, is, is amazing because they're t- – Shane, you're taking those bumps. There's only so much oh, yeah. padding and give you can put it. Sure. On, and, and things don't go your way all the time, right? And, and they're, they're biggest, gifted. They're gifted. No question, right? No question. Yeah. And I told you, you know, he's one of the highest guys on the roster. You know, he's three-time MAC champ for Kent State. But the grind, the, the 250 days in the hotel rooms. And if you watch, hey, every single one of these guys' shows that you watch about their lives – whether it's Ric Flair, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Steiner Brothers, every one of them is like a sad country song. You know, they're all, all, all the guys have, they're divorced, their kids don't like them. It's like, it's like, tr- like this tragic over and over and over broken record with a lot of these guys. My buddy doesn't live like that. He's a single guy. He's a 41 year old guy, he lives alone, travels by himself. <laughs> Doesn't it? And I was like, dude, you're doing it right. You don't have a family to disappoint. But like, yeah, think about it. I think that's a, that is very much a young man's game. And a lot of these guys stay past their prime for Gable to do that. You know, he's got to fall in love with that. And you really got to get into the grind of it. Cause his brother's in it right now. If you know that. Yeah. Bobby's his brother in right Bobby's now. in it. Yeah. yeah. And then both the Casper brothers are in it. Yes. Is Jacob yes. Casper's Julius Creed. I, th- I think that's the gimmick. I don't know. I love Jacob Casper. Great He's guy. Awesome great guy. guy. He's from He's Lexington, Ohio. Fourth awesome in Ohio. Guy. Jacob Casper's a couple times state placer in Ohio. Brent Rastetter was his coach. Good people. From I Lexington. saw Jacob Casper. You talk about mad returns? Talk about taking somebody's soul? Yeah. I don't remember. I, I think it might have been in St. Louis, but I'm going off of memory. I saw him put a guy down once, and the whole place shook. I mean, it was at the NCAA tournament, first Cleveland. or second it was round. Cleveland. Cleveland. Oh, my God. He just, I mean, he throttled this guy to the mat. I mean, he was trying like, to snatch wow. a soul out of his body. He it's one of the more soul. devastating Mary returns I've ever seen. He wanted oh, yeah. his soul. He did. Oh. And he took it. He took it. Oh. He, still, he still got it. Oh. He still got it. And it keeps it in a jar. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, like, you know, like, you look at the, that guy's a gifted athlete. That guy's oh, he's, a, he's chiseled out of granite, that guy. Yep. Yes. And then if I obviously, look like him, God. I wouldn't wear a shirt. I live in Wisconsin. <laughs> if I look like DJ Futrell or Casper, it could be 20 below out. I'm not wearing a shirt. I don't I need love it. it. No way. I love it. No uh, Shane, like, I think Gable's really going to have to, if he's going to have to get a dose of that lifestyle, though. And are they going to make him grind like that? Are they going to make him do 200, you know, because. Because Lesnar don't do that. And I don't even know if Lesnar really ever had to do that because he's well, such, I'm not sure. I, he's such a just awe-striking, massive presence of a human. And his I think he's got 20 dates on his contract. Something, something insane like that. These other guys are doing 300 shows, man. 200, yeah. 300 shows. Imagine that, Shane. My teaching contract has 183 days on it. Yeah, yeah, but he's, I mean, Gable's 21, he's yeah. young, I mean, he's 21 years old, he could, he could do this for 10 years, and he's still 30 years old, I mean, yeah, and that's dude. a great point, that's a great point, point. and I and think then, he'll love it, I mean, I think he loves, I mean, he, he likes to entertain, he likes the spot, like, he's showtime, Gable Steveson, when the lights go on, he's, he loves it, yeah, no, there's no question, and I think that he is that, I think he is everything that Brock is, he's not the physical being, the physical, like, physical stature, I guess I should say. Sure. Because I have the selfie from Pittsburgh, the 2019 NCAs, and someone's like, oh, man, wow, the Petrus Vili guy's way bigger than him. And then I was like, Taha Gould's six inches taller than him. And yeah. I showed yep. him the selfie. I'll send it to you after this. He's not – He 
I'm six foot, 250 pounds. He's my size. He's not that much. Yeah, he's he's sure. a little yeah. bit. He's like a half inch taller than me. Obviously, he's put together a little bit better than the dad bod here. <laughs> I get that. But the point is, like, he is not – he's not Brock 6'4". Brock, he's Brock, not imposing. And, yeah. No, he's Eagles not imposing. Not you get it. Yeah. Yes. Yep. He, he is unbelievable, though. What he did to the two best heavyweights in the world was, you know – and then he got he got freestyled too. He got freestyled. Sure. He got screwed out of points uh, when he forward the guy out of bounds. Right? They yep. should have gave him yep. four. Right? They gave him one. And then um, you know, he got gut wrenched. Got gut wrenched a couple but then times. He wins, but at the end of the day, he wins on folk style tactics. Yes. Hold you on. Know? Hold on. Yeah. What about the blunder though? What about the blunder with six oh, points? Hey. Yeah. Hey. That was a blunder on that rest part. Sure. 90, 99 out of 100 times, you know what those guys do. They go. Yeah. They do. They yes. give that, they give that yes. like arrogant face. No. Yes. He's going. And he had the presence of mind because of folk style wrestling. Yes. Going up. Only thing, yeah, only thing he, he didn't do was the, I want him up like this. He didn't do that like when they come I, back off a restart. You know, remember, because they, they can do that. They can do that in college oh, and high sure. school. Yeah, the optional start. want to go neutral. But, you know, I think, I think a big thing with – a lot of these guys now in the college level, you got to make somebody earn it. You can pick their ankle, like how Marinelli kicks the guy in the shin. You know, you're letting them have a point, but you're kicking them in the shin and you're demoralizing them, right? Right. And I like that. I, you know, a lot of, a lot, there was, used to be a lot more of this in Ohio. That's kind of our problem as we do this. Demoralize the guy a little bit. Try and maybe, maybe just demoralize him. I, I just doubt him. Even if you, even if you are, if you want to let him go, return him a couple times like yeah. make him pay don't I, I am not going to give you a free point yeah. i'm not going to give you anything for absolutely free not doing it grab his foot grab his foot and make him crawl away or even zeb get out in front of him put pressure on his yeah. head i mean but if, but if you're going to do that zeb then you better and i get this from jim gibbons then you better protect your ankles uh, right i mean if you're going to get out in front you better protect your ankles i mean that's that's another one of those like come on guys but you got to be aware of that but you got to going to take something out of his gas tank if, yeah. if you're going to give him anything to his advantage what marinelli does what alex marinelli the bull from st paris ohio what he does what if you you and you you see it all the time you're there you're mat level dude he's yeah. abusing those guys he is kicking them in the shin and it's like a, it's a cool little like foot sweep sh uh, shin he's just like, kicking them in the shin you know what i'm talking about Sure. And it's yep. like it's demoralizing. What he's doing, he's just like punishing him. And you know what that you know what? And listen, I'll own this. I'll say this to that guy's face. That guy trains so hard. They got to give that guy a little bit. They got to give that guy a buffer zone because he, when you're physically abusing other people and you're pounding and pulling and pushing and grinding them and twisting their neck, there's also wear and tear on your body. And I don't sure. think that guy's ever been a hundred percent at an NCAA tournament. And I think they're going to handle him differently. And I hope they do because I'm a big fan. Oh, he's I'm a, a big great Stickley kid. fan. He's an awesome guy. Great guy. Awesome great guy. Stickley's. I don't know if you know this. You probably do know this because you know the Jordans, but Polly Jordan, Jem's yep. wife is Polly Stickley. If you didn't know that. Yes. Yep. And, and she is the brother of Todd, I believe. Which is okay. Eli's. Todd, Todd and Hope are awesome. Yes, I, I believe know Todd a little yes, bit. They're brother and sister, so that's Jim's okay. brother-in-law. Yeah. Okay. So Molly is a stickly. So um, they they recruited my brothers. So my brothers wrestled for. Oh, all right. Uh, yeah, they they wrestled for Jim Jordan at Ohio State. Um, they have a very different story than everybody else who's claiming other things about Jim Jordan. My brothers like like him, and my brothers aren't Republicans, and they like the guy. They just like the guy, you know what I mean? They're, they don't like his politics, sure. but they love the guy. They lay in traffic for the guy. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so that's what's crazy about that. Like, so, effectively, Isaac Jordan's a stickly, right? His mom's a stickly, right? And they're all, they're all related over there, man. That's not even a joke. It's not even a joke. There's a yeah, lot of those folks who are, some, Yeah. When, that when that they won the, got some accolades. Yeah, oh, yeah. And when they won the state in 1981, Jim was a – was 81 or 82? Because Jim was a senior and won his four state title, there were stick multiple Stickleys on the team, and there were two Jordans on the team, Jim and Jeff. So when they won with Ron McConnus, the head coach at St. Paris Graham, it was the same core of core families that 
go to Wisconsin, go to Ohio State. It's that exactly. Yeah. And that's yep. what's crazy about it. They've won with those people. Now, have they had people move from Arizona? Did David Taylor come from uh, 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 was, uh, Wyoming? Wyoming. I yeah, you know, Wyoming, yep. the Star Valley. Did he? Yes, he did. Did um, I think Tucker Armstrong moved in? I think the uh, brothers that went to Cal Poly, they, they're from Half Moon Bay. They moved in. There's all types of them, right? There's all types of people who've moved to St. Paris because Jeff's got a great system. But being an Ohio guy and working down there, and then they recruited my brothers. I go way back with those people, right? I, I've known, you know, he always, Jim, Jim Jordan's always like, hey, uh, I, I just loved it. You know, your, your dad was real blue collar. And I remember they <laughs> set you and your brother up. He's like, uh, they gave you, you the right, right boxing glove and gave your brother the left wing and he, and he kicked the tar out of you. And I was like, yeah, he's two, two years older than me. He should kick the tar out of me. I was six years old. What do you want, Jim? Yeah, that's what I, that guy brings it up every time I see him. <laughs> My brother beat me up when I was six years old in front of him. And then we ate McDonald's cheeseburgers. It was a good time. And Coach Hellickson was with him, too. So, But my brothers yeah, loved him. Yeah, and Coach Hellickson's Wisconsin guy. Yeah, he was a – was is he NC champ for uh, the Badgers? Gosh, that I don't – that I do not know. I, 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 think, I think Russ was. I know he's a silver medalist okay. in Montreal. And then um, Russ – That was, what, 76? 76, Montreal. He's a freak. Okay. That dude's a mutant. Cause I worked camp with him. I was his dummy one week and Mitch Clark's dummy the same week. Oh, Mitch Clark. <laughs> I mean, that, I get anxiety when his name's even mentioned. I mean, yeah. that you talk about, I, again, I talk about the top game goes without saying he's in that conversation, man, Mitch Clark. You talk about taking people's souls. He's got, yeah. we talked about Casper's got one in the jar. Casper's got like a, you know, 50, 50 pound fish tank full of souls <laughs> or uh, Mitch Clark He's got like a refrigerator yeah, right? of, of like Mason jars. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so I worked this week at camp. Ken, Kenny Ramsey was the assistant coach. And he's like, Hey, you want to work? And we were in, we were in three rivers, Michigan. And that's whose dummy I was. And Ross Hallickson sweats like a, just a hawk. <laughs> and his big thing is that he has he has to sweat every day. It was like it's like his I want to say gimmick, but I it's like literally his habit of life, not a gimmick. He loves it. Okay. And the dude would just and he's hairy everywhere. And, sure, he's, and, sure. and he's, he's like, I couldn't believe how powerful he was. Because I was 20 That's years old. That's man strength right there. Oh That's my man God. strength. Yeah. And I, I think <laughs> he grew up on a tobacco farm and he would talk about that. And I was like, Yeah, I can feel your like hillbilly farm strength oh my god dude. <laughs> and then mitch is just his leverage is just incredible leverage is just un, unreal man um he changed my nephew's life my nephew uh pinned a guy in the state finals this past year wyatt miller with with mitch clark boot stuff um he figured out how to not let his hips fall off and anchor you know anchor with his foot his off foot that's not in he figured out that to, how to anchor and not fall off on his hip and he Pentagon in the first period of the state tournament so okay shout out to him um another thing i say is whenever somebody chooses top i'm always like he's going mitch clark on him he's gonna take top yeah yep yeah he was, was mitch clark. He's a great one yeah he great was unbelievable one that top. so hey you grew up you probably remember lee camp oh yeah so he he's from geauga county where i where i live right now yep. where that's the neighboring school I drive through Chardon every day on the way to work. So he's from Chardon, Ohio. And um, he's a Jaga County guy, man. He's from, from over here in the hills of Jaga County. And we've had some good ones from over here. I'm not from over you, here, Shane, but that okay. guy, he's a freak. But do you remember being like a little boy and, and seeing him wrestle at Wisconsin? No, he's, I'm 45. And, and he, was, he was at Wisconsin – I'm, I'm, I'm taking a guess here. He was at late Wisconsin 70s. mid 70s, mid, mid to late, late 70s. 70s. Yeah. But then, you know, so, he was up for the team all, you know, he was competing. He was our best guy. He's a three-time world champ all the way up to, you know, 83, 83. was, he was, you know, he was still the guy going into 82, 83. And then obviously the boycott is, you know, that, that took that away from a lot of those guys, Russ Hellix and um, yeah. obviously Lee Kemp. They, well, I mean, those guys the, the thing with up. me is, and, and it is, I mean, it is what it is, but yeah. He loses to Chuck Yagla as, as a freshman, and I believe that was in those days. If I understand it right, it was a tie score, and it went to like referee's decision. So if he, and it is what it is. But you look at Lee Kemp. Lee Kemp is one of those guys. If you said to me, 
you got to debate Lee Kemp being on the Mount Rushmore. I'm not, I, I could take a stab at it. And look how close he was, Zeb. Look how close he was. And I, I know it's an if, but if they get to wrestle over time when he's a freshman, maybe he beats Diego, maybe he doesn't. But if he does, he's going to be, you know, he's, he's got a path to four. Would have been the, the first one, yeah. Yeah. which is always big. And then he, he's got three world titles. He's killing everybody. The 80 Olympics get boycotted. Like, look, how, you talk about, like, just a couple little things are different. Lee Kemp could be a four-time national champ, three-time world champ, and a 1980 yeah. gold medalist. And, yeah. and that doesn't make it sound like, oh, he easily would have breezed through 1980. I don't want to diminish how tough it is to win an Olympic gold medal, regardless of how talented you are. But Lee Kemp was a stud. Yeah. Like, Lee Kemp, I think, I would, I would say this, Zeb, in my opinion, I think Lee Kemp might be the most underappreciated wrestler ever. I would 100% agree with that. And there's other, the only other guy that I would really put in his uh, class of being underappreciated and not known that well, who was a, just a mutant and a freak, would be Rick Sanders. I would okay. say Rick, because, but Rick Sanders is the whole, you know, Rick Sanders died. And I think Yugoslavia, he was a silver medalist. He was a medalist in Greco and freestyle. Have you ever, have you ever, he was like the Pacific Northwest, like wild man, right? He was like the prefontaine of wrestling. The dude was a freaking mutant, right? And well, let me wrestled. ask you this. Is, and I say this as a joke, but is Lee going to go to the world team trials in a couple of months and try to make the team? How about that? The dude looks like he could he's in amazing go at it. shape. Amazing <laughs> shape. His he's gifts are incredible. Oh. I mean, he still looks the. It's like, are you kidding? Unreal. Was he sixty-seven yeah. years old? Something. At least he's he's mid sixties for sure. It's unbelievable. And but when I, I, yeah, I've gotten to know Lee a little bit. It's really like unbelievable. him. Unbelievable. The the shape the guy's in. It's just and he he takes care of himself obviously, but man, yes, he looks incredible. And like, yeah, I like does. to watch these guys move. Like when I go shoot videos, right? To watch John Smith move still. To watch, uh, who was I just? Oh, Tim Flynn. Tim Flynn's got two re hips replaced. Tim Flynn still moves like he doesn't look like a 57 year old man with two hip replacements. Tim okay. Flynn looks like a guy, you know, he's obviously not Nick Lee Kemp. We get that, right? We get that. But how these guys move is for their age is incredible. And now, yeah. right? But Tim Flynn's got, he's got two replaced hips, man. Lee is completely healthy. Lee, I don't yeah. know if he's ever had a surgery, right? Like, it's, it's impressive just to see the guys move, right? Just to see how they move still, that's what's incredible to me. Because I know I don't move like these guys. I'm 42, and I don't move like these guys. I'm a 250-pound yeah. man. Yeah. I do not move like these men, and I never have. It, that's Lee just, in his prime. Lee in his prime doesn't take a second seat to anybody. I would say that. I, yeah, I mean, I would love to see. I mean, obviously, the dream match for me is Burroughs. Lee Camp, I mean, <laughs> sure. Oh man, uh, yeah, and, and and you know, throw uh, throw uh, Kyle Dake in a in a in a round robin, and a, I mean, yeah, that that is something else there. And you know, seventy four kilos, and then obviously Coach Monday. Coach Monday is Coach Monday's here in Ohio, by the way. He's uh about he's twenty minutes from where I job there, right? Yeah, he's he's at the Spire, about forty five minutes an hour from the here. Tiger. Yeah, he's he's got um. Uh, quite the task in front of him to build a team there, but they're in the prep schools and uh, the rules are different for him. So hopefully he can get it done. But I mean, think about that. He's the first ever, first ever person of African descent to win, you know, an Olympic, Olympic oh, yeah, uh, was... gold medal. That's amazing. Can it's unreal. Monday. Right. I remember watching him win. It's unreal. Yeah. Body lock for the win. Body lock for the win. Overtime against the Russian. And then he beats Arsene Fedzaev the, final, the, the following year. Fedzaev goes up a weight. He beats Fedzaev uh, for the world title in 89. Like, freak, man. Just, like, yeah. it's so yep. amazing. Watching him move. I just shot technique with him uh, about, geez, three weeks ago. Watching him move. He's 60, dude. The guy's 60. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. It's incredible. I'm very impressed with how these guys take care of themselves. You know, like I say, Russ Alexson, the pressure, feeling the pressure. It's just amazing. Being their dummy to see how these guys take care of themselves. It's I'm inspired. I mean, it's awesome. You know, maybe 
maybe I should uh, wrestle more, but man, their bodies were made for it. Those guys were given gifts. Uh, Shane, I cannot forget about my guys, our guys. We got, we got some guys. Yeah. We got some guys, right? They're we got the some best. guys. We know to defend what we built, right? Defense yes. soap. Um, one of my uh, my greatest partners, OAC, them, Barbarian Apparel. You're on the Barbarian Hour. But tell me what is going on with Defense Soap and, and, and what's the project happening? I just saw some social media on it. But explain the project that Defense Soap is, is uh, putting up for. And I believe it is it through Flow Wrestling? Yeah, it's going to be a flow film. I mean, first of all, Man, there are some great people in this sport. You know, I'm, I'm sure you've met a lot of great people. I've met a lot of great people atop that list in that top group. Guy Seiko, Charlie Agazino, Dan. Uh, Dan the man. Dan is Dan a creative man. guy. He's, he's interesting. He's, he's, you talk about an intelligent guy, yeah. Dan. Dan is really But smart. those guys do so much for wrestling. I mean, those guys do so much for wrestling. I love working with them. I've... You know, they're on our Big Ten broadcasts. I mean, I think, they, I think they're involved in everything. Yeah. Uh, but with, with Flow Films, there's going to be a 10-part series. It's going to be out uh, probably first week in November. The 100 greatest wrestlers, American wrestlers, top 100. And that is going to be awesome. It, I, I can't wait. So it's, it's presented by Defense Soap, Defend What You've Built. And I would go on and say this. I mean, I... I used defense so products. I was joking with Charlie last week. I'm like, if I never did anything with wrestling again, I would use defense soap because I love the products. I think they're awesome. Uh, but if, if you're a wrestler, get your defense soap, like have that stuff. Because the other thing too is they have phenomenal products. That's first and foremost. But I'm also a big believer of like support people in the sport. They give a ton back. Like they give so much back. Like I think it's important for the wrestling community to, you know, I mean, number, like I said, you need the stuff. You need it. You should have it. Get it from Defense Soap. They're awesome. My biggest thing with them is I'm living the gimmick because that is literally all I wash my sons with, right? Yeah. We do shower. They do bath. They have Defense Soap. What I actually had yep. to teach them, though, was Baby Defense, which is what a uh, guy hooks me up with. <laughs> baby Defense is not, um, it's not tear-free. So I had, to really I had to teach them early on, hey, you got to keep your eyes closed. And then, I mean, you know, you do, <laughs> you know, they figured it out real quick, but like oh, yeah. yep. all natural, everything they're doing is all natural. I mean, Joe Rogan, the biggest name in media on the planet, podcasting, yep. the guy with the largest following on the planet. He he's religious about it. My thing is it's literally what I wash my kids and myself with. Every yep. single day. You got to rotate. Yeah, that's what I I'm find this out. You got to rotate between bar and body wash. Okay. Cause sometimes a bar can dry certain skin out. So I got to rotate baby defense is super, super sensitive to my kid's skin and it doesn't dry them out. So, you know, and when we come home, we use a uh, regular gel, the shower gel. When we come home uh, from wrestling practice two days a week. So, you know, they're three and five and, and that's, you know, they're living by it. My kids, they love it. It's a great product. We, they go to defense soap, right? Uh, Leah, she yeah, sure. packaging. She does a well, great. They got their new wrestling room. I want to check that. Oh, out. Shane, it's the bees. Yeah. We had an OAC combine there with uh, Coach Cole. That was awesome. But yeah, to see, I told me about that. Yeah, to see the production directly next to this this wrestling room, it's an incredible deal, man. Like, and you just can't ask for better people. Gus Seiko. Yeah. Oh, my God. Gus Seiko, those guys grind. Gus Seiko was the national uh, assistant coach of the year for the St. Edward Eagles, where he was yeah, a two-time state champion. Had yeah, the factory. Yeah, and, and, and then they got um, – and then they're West Shore. Guy is, is the head coach at West Shore. So yep. they do a phenomenal job, and, and it's just to be a part of what they do. What, what, give me a little bit more on the insight of what they're going to do with the top 100. What's your involvement, and what should we expect? Because I worked on Flow Films. I worked on um, Terry. I did the uh, – Oh, really? Yeah, I did interviews. I did uh, Tom Ryan's interviews for Terry. Oh. When they released, I did the the release interview with Terry. So I was in on Terry a little bit, and then I was in on uh, geez, the Kyle Canal one. I was in on the uh, Edinburgh one because I, I did the Edinburgh broadcast for over 10 yeah. years. So I've been on a couple flow films. Um, 
apparently someone called me and they're like, Hey, you're on this. We are Penn state one. And I was like, okay. <laughs> you say so. Cause yeah. I never watched it, but yeah. like, I heard your voice a bunch. I go, yeah. Cause that's, I got a, I got a face made for radio. That's why I heard my voice a bunch, but, <laughs> but what can I expect Shane? Like what, what's your involvement? What should we expect from, from the top 100 wrestlers presented by defense soap through Flo, Flo wrestle? Yeah. I, I mean, I'm involved on the sales side of things. Uh, so I'm not involved in any of the, you know, picking the guys. Okay. Uh, I mean, that's, that's the, the flow content team. They'll do a great job. I, I think those flow films are absolutely spectacular. I mean, yeah. I love it when, when there's uh, those films come out, but the way that I, you know, like I said, a 10 part series, I'm assuming it's going to be 10, you know, released in, you know, 10 guys at a time or women at a time. Yeah. And uh, I think it's going to be a lot of build up. They'll hype it up big and, you know, I, I think the biggest thing is it's going to, I mean, it'll spark some great debates. I can tell you this, this, I can't, I think I'm okay telling you this. On the initial list, they had Gable Steveson at 100. And I basically wanted to go to blows with everybody. I'm like, because I'll tell you, I would have, I mean, Bader and Christian and Mike Mal, I mean, I'm Andy Hamilton, Kyle Klingman. I'm like, Gable Steveson. And, and you can, that's why this stuff is fun. It's like, you can make your own rules, your own, you know, parameters on, on how you want to do this. But to me, Gable Steveson, I think he should be seven to 10. I think Gable Steveson is a top 10 wrestler in United States history. I'd have him seven to 10. I'm going to say this. The Olympics he had is the top three Olympics. Yeah, it's, it, it's crazy. I mean, and, and the other thing too is, and again, it depends what the criteria is, but I just, I'm, if, if you look at, I mean, if there was a draft of some kind, let's say there was like a draft with all the great ones, fantasy draft of some kind, Gable Stevenson's getting picked in the top 10. Oh, no, there's no question. Absolutely, he's getting picked in the yeah. top 10. And, and a lot of people are going to cry recency bias, right? Oh, recency bias. Oh, it's because he's season now. No, look what no. the guy did. So look, if the only, the thing that like, if you look at Slay's Olympics, right? Slay beat uh, Leopold. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Check that. He lost to Leopold. Leopold was cheating. Tested, yeah. Yep. Tested positive. He lost the gold medal match, but rightfully so, that is Brandon Slay's gold medal. That is his yes. medal. There's no question. I think that is the, th that's a top three. That's a, like that, that weight, him winning that weight and beating Saitiev, it's a top three. It's incredible what he did to beat a guy who's that good and who's that dominant that long, mm -hmm. who made other people look just, if you go, 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 I, I have a, I got a deep dive and I got an iPad with like 15 Satya of brothers matches on it, just loaded onto it. I ripped them off the internet from like 15 years ago. I mean, those guys commit felonies, just murder really good yeah, guys and make yeah. them look silly. What Brandon Slay did was amazing. The thing that takes away from it for a lot of people, not me, is, you know, he didn't win the gold medal match um, in, in that period of time. He won it later on when we knew that Leopold was cheating, right? He earned that, though. That is Brandon Slay's medal. That's, it's a top – that is still a top three tournament to me. I'm just – I'm putting it out there. I don't know. Okay. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm crazy. But who, who do you – who else? Give me another – give me another top – Give me another, like, just tournament that just, like, a person who just, like, if we're talking top 100 here, give me some tournaments that, you know. Man. I you know. mean, I think what David Taylor's done, I mean, David Taylor with the, you know, with the epic matches with Yazdani, I mean, that one, I think, I think David Taylor, I mean, every, every event seems to solidify himself and move himself up the ladder. Yeah. I mean. No question. No I mean, question. All of a, I mean, because now, now all of a sudden Taylor's a, you know, two-time national champ, and he's, uh what, four-time Big Ten champ. He's got a couple world titles, an Olympic gold medal. I mean, all this. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy because you think about guys like Taylor and Dake, those two come to mind. It wasn't like they – I mean, they couldn't make teams. I mean, they, these guys aren't making teams it's until unreal. they're – It's unreal. Know, like, mid, like what, Bur what Burroughs did to make everybody better, it's incredible. Like what he did. I mean, who, who, who would be number one on your – who would be number one on your list? On my list? Yeah. I mean, either Buvice or Saitiev or Arsene Fridzayev. No, for, for Americans. Oh, I'm sorry. Great I'm, sorry I'm sorry. I'm sorry I messed it up. Yeah. But, like, those guys are unreal. <laughs> I have so much respect for, for those guys. And in Sagi Live, I'm sorry I, I shifted. I apologize. 
We were talking. I was talking about who won Olympics, and I forgot the focus it was the top 100 American. <laughs> Kenny Monday. Kenny Monday. I think. Um, and then how Dave Schultz redefined himself. Right. He came back. You know, won a world title after people thought he was over the hill. He was set up for 96, and then obviously tragedy strikes. I think Dave Schultz is incredible. And then just to hear more about that guy's life, Bruce Baumgartner, Helen. Helen, I think Helen's tournament might be number one for me. She might have had the greatest Olympic tournament ever. I think that what Helen did, was it Fujita? I think she beat Fujita, right? Uh, um, I should know this. I yes, was there. I think it was Fujita. But anyhow, I think what Helen did sent United States women's freestyle wrestling onto another trajectory. I think she's a pioneer. She's a trailblazer. And what she did changed the sport of wrestling in America. And I think her tournament would be number one for me. You can call me crazy, dramatic. I don't care. What well, I, I, get, I mean, really, because of the impact. I mean, the impact, impact is. That, I mean, yeah. look at look at women's wrestling from the, you know, so she wins in Rio in 2016, five years later here in Tokyo. I mean, look at the women's freestyle team. Yeah. I mean, yeah. now it's, I mean, it's, it's in women's wrestling yeah. is on fire. Deal. I mean, it's that, deal. and I've said yeah. this before, Zeb, if you are, if you are a high school, a governing body of a state high school association how can you not have high school girls wrestling sanctioned like what are you what are you not seeing and i'm trying to keep this i'm trying to take myself out of the wrestling seat and just look at it from a pure like yeah. common sense standpoint and division one women's wrestling like and i'm not i don't know things behind the scenes and how it works it's probably things that i don't know what i'm talking about but Man, I just I would be all over this stuff if I was administrators. Well, like, it's emerging sports. It's they gave it emerging sports status, and what they're doing with it is, it's creating it's creating gender equity amongst the athletic department. So the problem, yes. the problem with everything is football. You got to exempt football because you can have a whole women's athletic department that doesn't have eighty five full rides. You can have a whole women's athletic department. That, that the whole athletic department doesn't have a quarter of the football budget. The problem is you have to exempt football. Football is what drives commerce. Yeah, I'm but not, wouldn't you say that, that? But wouldn't you say that that would even be more of a reason to add women's wrestling? Because no, you're yes, looking for this. Yes, yeah, no, yes, sport, right? yes. It's not. Hold on, I, I, I stated that wrong. The problem is they're trying to build something equal, equitable to Alabama football to Clemson football, to Auburn football. And, it, and it's just, it's not, it's really hard to create equity when you have this massive cash cow. It's never going to be fair for women until they exempt and put that, put it somewhere else, put it on its own deal. It's, it's its own deal. Can we agree with that? It's an anomaly. They don't play it in other countries, Shane. They do not play the sport of football in every, in the other countries. We're the only sport. We're the only country that does it. You know that Well, Canada. And that's like kind of fake. Yeah. And it's where a lot of our like over the hill guys will go and play for an extra car. Johnny Manziel, when he gets out of rehab, he can go play and be sure. one of the better guys and can't, you get my point, right? Like it's where the guys who can't make the NFL anymore, who are too old or too, whatever, or too injured. Some of them can go to Canada, but we're the only country besides Canada that has football where people got helmets on and they're clobbering each other and 85 full rides and massive budgets and these Taj Mahal stadiums and facilities. Yes, to answer your question, add women's wrestling. Yes, if you want to create gender equity in Title IX, um, to get rid of Title IX issues, yes, you add wrestling. I, it's a no-brainer. Helen changed that for me. Helen really changed the tide, I think, and really brought a ton of attention to it. It was one of the greatest upsets of all time in the Olympics, right? Right? We're, we're, we're putting yeah, it up there with Corellin. We're putting it up there with Corellin, yeah? Would you say that? Um, I just, I mean, I'll, I'll be real honest. I mean, I think we all knew it was going to be a real tight match. I mean, I, I don't think anybody was, I wasn't surprised she won. I mean, Helen's trajectory, I mean, she was fucking phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, right. that, world champ in 2015, I mean, just, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it wasn't like she came out of nowhere. I mean, Rulon kind of came out of nowhere. On a collision, those two were on a collision course. Yes. And, yes. and as far as Corellin goes, I mean, you didn't, nobody scored a, you didn't score an offensive point. Like I'm just, I'm just you, you broke a lock. I, I just, I'm just, Hey, it's great. It was great for wrestling. <laughs> it's great for wrestling. It, put, it, it, it was great. But I'm not, it's just not my thing. I, uh, I, just, 
I can think uh, of, in my humble opinion, there are a lot of other matches that to me were far more impressive than that one. The far guy more. Had lost in 13 years, man. <laughs> You did, yeah, break but, right you did break a lock. You know what I mean? I mean, it wasn't – The technicality, it, yes, it I agree. It was great. It, 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 it put wrestling on NBC. Rulon was all over the place. It put its attention on the sport, yeah. like, awesome. Yeah. From that standpoint, A, it's fantastic. Yes. What Helen did truly changed the sport of women's freestyle wrestling and women's wrestling and girls wrestling in the United States of America. Yes. It's no far question. more revolutionary, in my opinion. No question. No I don't question. even know how we get to these places, but I love it. I love everything <laughs> about it. So, once again, Shane's going to be uh, – we're going to be rolling out the top 100 USA wrestlers of all time. Brought to you by Defense Soap. Yeah. Good guys flow. at Defense Soap. You got to defend what you built. We're getting into that. Shane, I, I did this all backwards. <laughs> <laughs> I need to have your background in wrestling, dude. Like, I don't think, I think we all know what the electric factory is, the uh, USS Abraham Lincoln or the USS Enterprise or USS whatever nuclear power sub or aircraft carrier we have that is powered by uh, nuclear propulsion. That is the Shane Sparks <laughs> energy that I see on the sidelines for all of the post-match interviews in the Big Ten. Everywhere I see Shane Sparks, I get fired up. I want to run through a brick wall. Tell us your background in wrestling and tell us, like, did you wrestle in college? What, what did you do in high school? Where are you from? And just give us a little background on Shane, Shane Sparks, because I don't know if a lot of people know your background. They know the energy. They know the uh, unmistakable passion for the sport, but I don't think they really know Shane Sparks. Where are you from? So I grew up in, uh, in a town of 7,000, uh, Ripon, Wisconsin. So it's uh, – Ripon? Like Ripon? In Ripon, R-I-P-O-N. Okay. And uh, my dad was a barber, did not wrestle, but there was, a, there was a farmer in town. And my dad was friends with his family. I'm, you know, six, seven years old. And the, the, one of the kids on the farm wrestled. He was a heavyweight. His, name was, his nickname was Fuzz, Fuzz Dzinski. So my dad was a barber. He'd cut hair on Friday nights until like 8 o'clock. I got one brother. He's two years younger, my brother Brandon. And... My dad would pick us up and take us to these wrestling matches. I mean, and the next thing you know, I was in first grade. I'm at a wrestling tournament. I don't even know if I ever went to a practice before I went to a tournament. I, don't, I just don't remember it. But I was seven years old, Fond du Lac High School. And my life, little, I always think about it. That would have been March of 1983. And it's just unbelievable to me, like that day, I would have never, ever imagined how that day would impact my life like it changed the whole course of my life for sure i mean that's almost 40 years ago so you know i wrestled through high school uh was a was a decent high school wrestler i took third at the at the wisconsin a private school division i took third as a junior and then second as a senior and and really wanted to wrestle in college my my goal always was arizona state i remember going to a bobby douglas camp in in 1991 Sean Charles was there, Marco Sanchez, Zeke Jones was there, and I wanted to wrestle at Arizona State so bad. My whole room was all decked out in ASU wrestling. Everything I wore was Arizona State, and, uh, you know, that did not happen. It was funny because I was talking to Leroy Smith at the Hall of Fame Museum when I was in Stillwater last week, and, and I told him, I said, man, Leroy, it's crazy because I, I wanted to wrestle for you in the mid-'90s, but uh, I did not do that. Um, I got a son, Austin, who will be – Man, he'll be 20, 26 years old here coming up. He's 25. So, uh, you have a 25 year old son. I did not know yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, that, that is what ended the wrestling career, essentially, you know, because I had to be a dad. So, everything got kind of pushed aside. And, um, you know, I got four years of eligibility left. It's getting late. You know, if I'm going to go, I got to go now. But, uh, <laughs> but did, I you never go to college? College. did you go to college? Yeah, I did not. I did not. I, I went to a, once Austin went to kindergarten, I went to a, I'm like, I've always wanted to be in broadcasting. I've, oh, that's all I've ever wanted to do. I've never, ever wanted to do something else. So I went to this like hole in the wall radio TV school in, in Phoenix, Arizona for like five months. And it was, I just met some really good people there. Some doors opened up and it was all radio. Like I, 
I'll give you a little secret, Zeb. I have never had a real day of TV training in my entire life. If I'm being real honest, I don't even know what I'm doing. I just kind of, you know, it's like, you know how to broadcast? No, but I stayed at a Holiday Inn Express last night. I and mean, that's how I feel. <laughs> like, it's like, like, oh, we'll just kind of go with the flow and figure it out as we go. But uh, I just love the sport. It's just such a great sport. It's such a great sport. I mean, I got, I, I owe this sport a ton. And a lot of it's just because of how hard it was. I mean, I think when I look back on the biggest impact wrestling's had on me is I like hard. Like I went for a, uh, about a month ago, I did a 227 mile one day bike ride. And I think that's, you know, you, you talk, I mean, Tom Ryan's got that chosen suffering thing that he talks about. And I really agree with that. I think sometimes you have to do things that you gotta, you gotta chosen suffering. So why do I do those kind of things? I think it's, it's because of wrestling. I mean, I just, I like the hard. I like the hard. It's, I, love it. I like it. I love it. Are you ready? Do you, do you got any overtime left in you or not? Hey, I like going to deep waters. This is where it's, it's time to get a takedown and win this thing. So we're going to go barbarian hour. We're going to go bar, barbarian hour bonus time, overtime, as I like to call it, <laughs> with Shane Sparks. So Shane, you just talk about, I had, you and I talked off camera and I, I told you a big part of what I'm doing now is talking about kids, about responsibilities in life. You actually literally, literally just brought up what ended your ending, ended your wrestling career and you had a, you had a son, right? And it yeah. changed your life. And I'm guessing you wouldn't change a thing about it, right? And you ran towards the responsibility rather than away from it, right? Where do you think that yeah. came from in you? Uh, my parents, that's a simple one. Uh, I just had great parents, great perspective. I mean, they were just my parents. Now that I'm, you know, 45 years old, I have my own kids. I've, I've come to appreciate that you don't have to be fancy. Like, I mean, they would take me to Dairy Queen after Little League games and they get, you know, they, we'd get a Sunday in those little helmet cups. Like, was that very expensive? Probably not. But Great memories. I mean, I never went to, we just didn't have a ton of money. It wasn't like we were poor, but we weren't, you know, Great America. I, I went to Great America when I was 23. Noah's Ark, this is a big water park. I went there once. We maybe go to a Brewer game once a year. Maybe, you know, that was about it. But I could always count on them. Like I could count on my parents. I still can. My, my dad passed away a few years ago, but my mom is great. I can depend on them all the time. They showed up, just nothing fancy. They were very fundamentally sound parents. Great perspective, great perspective. You know why I love wrestling, Zeb? Because my parents let me love it. It was never like, you gotta do this and you gotta do this. Like, I see things now going to different sporting events and I just cringe. It, it blows, I'm so grateful that I had parents that let me develop a passion for what I wanted to develop a passion for and guide me and let me work and have fun. And the expectation was never like, you know, you, you, you better be a division one wrestler. Like, come on. I mean, I just, I, I just, I just really loved how they, they were just great parents. And so getting back to my son, it was just, my faith's important to me. You know, I mean, it's just like, how can you turn your back on something like that and not feel guilty? And I'm not a perfect parent by any stretch. Make mistakes all the time. But yeah, Austin's great. He's a great kid. He's uh, serving our country in the United States Air Force. Super proud of him. One of the kindest people you'll ever meet. He's so kind. Like never wrestled. Yeah, actually, I think he wrestled for one year. I didn't push it. He was a tall kid. He played basketball. He's six, six feet tall, six one. He does tell me though that he regrets that he didn't keep wrestling because it was, you know, it's just a good sport. I just didn't, you know, in this sport, you got to be a little off. I mean, I'm, I am 100%. <laughs> I get it. Like you, you better. I'm a little you off. Be off. I know I'm off. You got to be. I mean, I know I am. I can tell by, when I have conversations with people, sometimes I can tell they're looking at me like, man, this guy's a little different, which is it's who it. I am. But I love it. I love everything about know, it, man. Be, wrestling's a little bit different, but uh, so yeah, that's, were you, were you 19 when you had him? Uh, I was, 20? let's see here. I was, was I 20? I must have been 20. I was 20. Yeah, 20 years old. Yeah, he's, he's 25. I'm 45. Yeah, I was 20. 
I was 36 when I had my first son. That's, I, I will tell you this. Terrified. Um, nah, but that's the way, like, I wouldn't trade off. I mean, everything goes the way it's going to, and I wouldn't trade him for anything. I would also, if I'm being honest, like, I live in reality too. I wouldn't recommend that. Like, I, I, I'm a far better parent at 45 than I was at 20, obviously. Like, I look back on my, I mean, I was a baby myself. I didn't, life is about decisions. Like you have got to make good decisions at critical times. And that is, I've made some, I've made a lot of really good decisions, but I've made a few. I've made a few that were not good decisions. And maybe my favorite line with bad decisions, not that it was a bad decision, but it, uh, when you make bad decisions, they have consequences and you don't get to pick them. And that's kind of what I've learned. Like, man, I'm in, I'm in a couple rough, you know, I might be in a couple tough spots. And at the end of the day, it's like, you got to kind of look yourself in the mirror and, and own it and try to learn. And, but it's, it's make good decisions. Gosh, it's, it's so, I mean, you want to sum, you want to sum up life real quickly. Like, the decisions you make will have a huge impact and dictate where you end up, how you live, stuff like that. So many forks in the road, right? Like you're saying, there's just so many like decisions to be made and there's just so much. Yeah. And there's, you, put, you know, you put pressure on yourself or your parents put pressure on you or you put pressure on you, your friends put pressure on you, person you're in a relationship puts pressure on you it's hard to make the right decisions when people are putting a lot of pressure on you and young people's brains aren't developed, right? They're sure, still in their sure. formative period, a lot of them, and they're, and they're making decisions that are going to affect them the rest of their lives as oh, young yeah. people. And yeah. I hate how unfair that is, but that's life. You know, if there's one thing, one thing we've learned, I think in the last 18 months is expect the unexpected. Yeah. <laughs> and life's not fair. Expect the unexpected and life's it's not, not fair. fair. I'll add not, on to it, Zeb. I'll give you another, I'll give you another thing that I swear by too. And it sounds a little bit cold, but it's the reality. And there's so many great people out there, but let's get one thing straight. Nobody cares. Nobody, Nobody cares. One of my favorite lines is like 80% of people don't care about your problems. And the other 20% are happy that you have. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Hell yeah, man. And Nobody it, it, cares. It's like, nope. well, I got to, you know, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened. Nobody cares. Just come to, nobody cares. So you got to yeah. figure it out. Yeah. And, and I can tell you that, you know, there's been things that have happened to me or my family or people in my family. And, and yeah, it, the world is not as kind and snuggly of a place as a lot of people think, right? It, it's, it's tough. You know, it's I tough wish and, life, I wish you got a do over in life. Yeah, how how great don't. would it be if you could do it twice? Yeah, no, I agree. And, and I, uh, my mom said something to me the other day, uh, we were talking on the phone and one of my nephews got his bell rung playing football. My wife or my mom's like, I hate football. It, it sucks. I can't believe what it did to you. I'm like, what do you mean what it did to me? And, um, <laughs> I tore my ACL, my MCL, my LCL, my medial and lateral, lateral meniscus all in one shot. Oh, I heard all the pops, felt oh. all the pops. And my leg was uh, noodly. Like it was, um, it opened 45 degrees. My leg was locked out and two guys jumped on my back. I was snapping for an extra point. And another guy cut me. He cut me while my knee was completely locked out because the oh. – guards step behind you so people can't shoot the gap and block the field goal i think we're winning the football game 55 nothing against our rival port clinton and i tore my acl and um i was a junior in high school and i didn't get to wrestle that year and i missed my you know my junior year and then my senior year i went out and i think we were eight and two in football and i played football i played football but you made it back that fast. yeah yeah i broke my hand uh in two a days and i played with a cast on and a big brace and then um I wrestled that year and I'm the youngest of uh, five kids. You know, there's, I got three older brothers. All my brothers were state champs. And um, really? yeah, for my brother, Ferd was a state two time state champ. That's Ian's dad. And then my brother, okay. Chad was a state champ. He has two sons, a, a son that's a junior and a son that's an eighth grader. And they both wrestle. And then I had my brother, Tate, who's two years older than me. He was a state champ in 95. His son was a state champ last year. So his son is now wrestling for Ian at Appalachian State. Okay. So, so you know, I've had two nephews, three of my brothers. Um, I had a cousin who was really good who lost in the state semifinals to Roger Chandler. 
He took oh. third in the state, you know. So, so the you know they're tough guys. These guys are tough guys. They're all tough. And guys. Rogers all, a Saint Ed's guy. What's that? Rogers a Saint. Yeah, Ed. yeah. My cousin went to Oregon Clay. Oregon Clay. That's where my mom and dad went to high school. And um, you know, the, things happen, man. And, you know, and I got beat in the state semifinals. Some dude like kind of kicked my ass, right? <laughs> and um, man, I, I just learned so much. I learned so much as a young man that nobody cares. Nobody cares yeah, at all. They don't care, care about your injuries. Yeah. You know, and then I went to Kent State and wrestled all five years and uh, placed in the MAC a couple times. And one year I lost in the true second match to qualify for the NCAAs to a guy from Central Michigan, Brett Faustman. He, but he's better. You know, he earned, he earned the spot. Sure. But, you know, that's just, that's just, that's life. That's life, you know. And um, Jim Anderson took me into the bowels of uh, the Convocation Center at Ohio University. And it was a true second match. And it was real close between us, Kent State, Central, and Ohio U. And I was like, hey, coach, I'm just going to forfeit for true second. I don't care. My knee, I tore my uh, meniscus. Tore my meniscus, had, and I have the, like 20 stitches in my eye here. It was, you know, it was just tough. And um, Jim Anderson called. He berated me for like five. <laughs> You're going to give up on your team. What is wrong with you? Well, then yeah. I later I later found out the true second matches don't even count in the score. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> they don't even count in the score. It's a principal thing, though. No, and that was it. And, and, and yeah, yep. yes. So like, people don't like Jim Andersey, and they're like, "Yeah, Andersey's this, he's that." I'm like, I'm gonna tell you something right now. Jim Andersey is one of the first persons, first people, who gave me like, just these like constant doses of reality because he's he's a prick and it, but he, he calls it how he sees it and that's what i have always liked about jim you know like my brother fur didn't have you know he, he i don't i think he maybe thought he could have been better or whatever and he, maybe he shouldn't have gone to kent state whatever it may be but i will say that about jim anderson if you're one of his guys he'll lay in traffic for you the guy will do whatever he can to help you. He'll do whatever. He, I have a teaching job because of Jim Andersey. Okay. The, a connection he made with an alumni, alumnus up there. Um, so that's what I, you know, and I, I, I'll, I'll have that guy's back no matter what because I remember as a freshman, he's like, walked yeah. up to me. He's like, Miller, you're fat and you're weak as a kitten. <laughs> he was right. I was fat. So I had to run more and do more pull-ups and get stronger and like try and get not have such a soft body. So I think that, you know, I appreciate that because that guy is a dose of reality. I told my brother Tate today, I go, dude, you're a dose of reality. You you are, you are what, what this society needs right now. You do not care about anybody else's problems and you want to get the job done. No, he just doesn't care. He wants to get the job done. You, know? you speak about those matches you know, getting the next best thing. That's why, to me, those guys at the NCAA tournament, when they lose in the first round and then they win, like, five matches in a row yeah. to be an All-American, like, that, you talk about, I mean, that takes some marbles. Does. Like, you got to have some stones to do that. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, now I'll tell you this, the proudest I ever was of, of, of Ian was when he lost the Real Buto match yeah. that he won. Yep. Yep. And then we went back and we, re we gathered with Matt Hill and, um, you know, Josh, Josh and uh, Josh Moore and, and Jim Anderson, they weren't really in that. They didn't really, they let, they let Matt Hill do his thing. And, and he wasn't going to wrestle. He's like, I'm not wrestling. Oh, why would I wrestle? And I'm like, Dude, you're wrestling. what are you talking about? You're wrestling. And Matt Hill, um, Ian's mom, Stacy and myself and my wife, Sarah, we went back and we just kind of, we sat around him and went out and got some subway with him and just kind of were behind him. You know what I mean? And, uh, tech followed the guy in the second period and around the, around the That's big. It's just big when you, when, because it's never easy, but under those circumstances, I can yeah. only imagine the yeah. devastating. I mean, you are devastated. It's your lifelong dream. It yeah. shattered and it shattered the way that went down yeah. to come back. That that would be, I can only imagine how difficult that is. I, I love the, you know, it's like uh, I was thinking about this the other day. Like the toughest guys, like pure tough, just pure tough guys. And one of the guys that I'm that I think about, I believe, as a freshman, he lost in the first round, and then I think he took fifth. And this year, he won a national title. 
One of my favorite guys is Nick Lee from Penn State. So tough. Dude. What, what is it? Chop wood, carry water. Yep. Yes. Like Nick Lee to me, holy smokes. I can't imagine towing the line against Nick Lee. You, you clearly know if you're going to beat this guy, you're going to go to hell and back about nine times. Are you willing to go there nine yep. times? Yeah. Because you're not going there once. I'll promise you that. You're not going there twice. You are going to have multiple visits where you are going downstairs and you're going to stare Satan in the face for a couple of I mean, it's Nick, Nick Lee is, if, if you can't tell, I'm a big fan. And it's yeah. just because it's so tough. I mean, if I wanted to, like, I, I often think about these things. If I was like a basketball coach, I'm bringing Nick Lee in and we're going to talk about toughness. We're going to bring guys in like Corey Clark, Dan St. John, or not Dan, Derek St. John from Iowa. Yeah. Corey Clark from Iowa, Nick Lee from Penn State, Dennis Hall. Dennis Hall's a Wisconsin guy. Like, you know, these guys are so tough that I would I would kill to be inside their head for a few minutes to see how it's all wired up there because yeah. it's it's fascinating to me. It, it, what's amazing to me is like you're saying those guys. You know, I got I have my list too. Hunter Stieber's on my list because okay. I saw his brother commit thousands of felonies against him. <laughs> I mean, things if you did it to somebody in society. Yeah, you'd be you'd be behind bars. Yeah, you'd be behind yep. bars for multiple yep. felonies and many many penitentiaries and throughout the fifty states in the District of Columbia, and our surrounding territories. Because what that guy is doing, what he does to him is just like it's unbelievable. Just how like gritty and tough the dude is. Just like yeah. the amount of of abuse the guy can take and there's just well, we talk about guys too i mean we talked about him i mean david taylor yeah i think his toughness is maybe overlooked at times because he's so talented kyle Dake, jordan burroughs i talked yeah. to tony ursulin once who's at purdue now but he was at, at nebraska with burroughs under manning and i'm like give me something about burroughs like that's like you have to spend time around him to really appreciate it and he goes he didn't even hesitate he goes he is what people don't understand about burroughs is how tough he is like tough and i i just think that is you, you you better have that right and i don't know how i don't know if that's learned i don't know if that i, I don't know but some of those guys like i i don't it, it's incredible to me how you can be that tough like the guy who you wouldn't <laughs> hey if the mob had to torture somebody or if the russians got somebody <laughs> and they wanted information out of them or they wanted somebody to confess Who's the person you would put out there to take the most abuse? And and um, what's the big the big like beer belly dude who's the MMA fighter? Uh, big He's country. fighting now. Yeah, Roy Nelson. I, I don't know him. Roy Nelson is called Big Country. Okay. Google Roy Nelson. I watched Ginger Ginger Dos Santos. I went to UFC one seventeen when Sonnen fought. Uh, Anderson Silva and beat him up for 24 minutes and then got triangle choked or whatever. Okay, okay. But Roy Nelson got just absolutely punching bagged for 20, 15 minutes, whatever <laughs> it was. Stand. He kept knocking him out on his feet, and the guy's just so tough. He just like, yeah, MMA guys. MMA guys. Oh, I mean, I, there's some that I just – some of the abuse some of those people take. I'll give you crazy. one. I'll give you the MMA guy that I absolutely love. Are you talking about tough? Clay Guida. I just watched his fight. I literally – have you ever watched his fight with Diego I, Nightmare all, Sanchez? I've, Clay Guida. Dude, you're, you're – crazy. Yes, Clay Guida, and it's all <laughs> wrestling because he's Izzy's guy. Oh, my gosh. I love – Clay Guida is uh, one of my favorites. Dude, and imagine – Clay Guida's fighting. I'm uh, like, So much energy, and he'll sit oh, there and trade God. with – Hey, how about this? He'll sit there and <laughs> trade with anybody. <laughs> And I, I, how would you like to run into that guy in a dark alley in oh Chicago? Oh my gosh! Or or you don't know him? No, oh, yeah. Or, or you he don't looks know like him. Hippie. You don't know hey, look at this hippie! Look at this curly-headed yeah, hippie! You start shooting your mouth off, or you not, you know, you knock into him, or you, whatever. It's like, oh, you want to go? Like, no, trust no. me, you have no idea. You Listen, have no idea what you're. There's some going to be guy. some souls. Some souls are going to go home in a gear bag with him. I so wouldn't you don't fight want... Clay Guida with yes. three tanks and an army. Like hey, no... he he fought he fought in that UFC I was at. Oh, he's... I've only been to one UFC, 
And the carpenter, Clay Guida. Clay, Clay, Clay the carpenter, Guida, <laughs> yes. Um, he fought, geez, oh, Pete, Junior Dos Santos beat, just beat Roy Nelson within an inch of his, it was the saddest thing I've ever seen. And Roy Nelson just wouldn't go down. If I'd have had a towel and I could have thrown it oh, from the man. upper deck where I was, I would have. But some of these guys, hey, why are we so dominant? I want to hear why do why do the wrestlers jump into it? The NCAA D one two three guys, why do they dominate MMA? I want to hear shit. I, oh, I have a different man. answer, maybe, but why? Because people have no understanding how good these guys are. I mean, you have guys. I mean, let's most of these guys are have been wrestling for fifteen to twenty years at a high, high, high level. You, it doesn't matter what the sport is, Zeb. The top half percent, that top one percent, when you're watching it on TV, you can't comprehend how good they are. When you're watching an NFL football game, you can't comprehend how good they are because they all look pretty similar. And that's, I mean, that's all sports at the highest level. You cannot learn how to, if, if you've never wrestled before or have little wrestling training and you're going to go to the MMA and you're going to fight some you know, some division one wrestler, you, you are not making that up in a couple of years. You just, you'll never catch up. So, so that's wrestling is definitely, I believe the most important discipline. I mean, I think you can learn how to punch. I'm not saying it's again, I'm not saying like that's that easy either. I know there's intricacies to these things. There's levels, but if you have a, re a really good wrestling foundation, geez, that, I mean, it, uh, hey, proof is in the pudding. There's, like, this there, isn't a, it's not, I mean, it's look, not look, a question. Look, look what's happening. It's not, it's not up for debate. It's, no, it's, it's not up it for is, debate. Right? So think about this. These guys do, and you do, you do the Big Ten schedule so you know. These guys in that Big Ten schedule do all that travel, and they're doing two weigh-in scratch a yeah. weekend. Yes, yes. They are doing... Some guys could get, depends if they go to opens or not, they can get 22 weigh-ins in a season. I think the one year that Imar went undefeated, two years in a row he went undefeated as a freshman sophomore, yep. I think he had 22 or 23 weigh-ins or 24 weigh-ins. And in the last competition, which is the only competition where you do this, you got three weigh-ins in successive days. These guys are so far ahead of managing their rubber legs, oh, sure. their Absolutely. organs, their diet, when they're cutting out water, because we all know there's a water weight cut. Everybody yep. knows yep. that. They can do all the stuff they want to change, but the, the water weight cut's a big part of it. They know when to do it, and they're doing it twice in a weekend. I want you to think about this. Imar has as many weigh-ins in two NCAA seasons as – Conor McGregor has in his whole career. Yeah, yeah, not even close. Think about that. Not even think close. about that. So, yeah. so think about how they manage their weight, how they pull the weight, and then a lot of these MMA guys are pulling 20, 25 pounds in a in a 24 yeah. to 48 hour cut. Disaster. And, and it is insane what they're doing to their bodies and their organs. And I think that the weight and then the training and all the stuff you learn as a little kid, and you know, don't go to your back, don't go to your hip. Mm -hmm. all these tough things that they teach you and um you you know it's it's not like what regular water breaks i think those little things really 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 accumulate and they add up and it gets tough and if you look you know luke fickles the head coach at cincinnati he yep. says he'll recruit any 170 pound or above state champion in ohio I'll tell you I, when, I, when i did this this football game the other day zeb it's only the third division one football game i've ever been to I mean, I love college football, but it's only the third one I've ever been to. I've been to a couple of Badger games. So I'm down on the sidelines the other day, and I'm seeing this in real time. I mean, I'm watching this. And, and never in my life, and I made a tweet on this, never in my life has it been so apparent. We talked about before, hey, hey let's get these high, school, these high school associations to sanction girls wrestling. Like, no brainer. Then the other no-brainer is, how can you be a football coach and not all but insist that your guys wrestle? Like, come on. It, 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 it's, it's like peanut butter and jelly. 
It is so obvious. To, I mean, I left there the other day thinking to myself, how could anybody not be like, you have got to do this? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you're preaching to the choir here, dude. I, I mean, I don't have an argument. Have there's, you ever seen? There's supposedly people out there, there's supposedly football coaches out there that don't buy into this. Like, you should be in the weight room. Yeah. Come on. Are you, no. are you, what are you missing? Have you ever seen the cust Aaron Costello, the uh, the backup heavyweight for Iowa versus Tristan Wirth? I think it is. Have you ever seen that match? The Wirth. I, I haven't. Wirth is six eight. Oh sure. Yeah. Costello, I think, is five eight. Okay. And and Costello's the backup to uh, Cassiope. Yep. And you got to Google this when we get off, or I'll send it to you. Really? Was it was it at the Iowa State tournament? No, it was Where like a really? local. Really? I don't know. It looked like it might have been the DeKalb Corn Open or. Okay. I don't know. Okay. I mean, it's just, you know, wrestling's tough there. They're gritty. They're hard-nosed. And Costello just wears them out and eventually just bulldogs them and pins them. I think and, but, I, but I would say this, though, Zeb. It's, it's just one of those things like – I'll give you an example. If I could go back and wrestle again, if I could go back to high school, where, where, you know, where most of us wrestled in high school, I, I don't know why I didn't run cross-country. So, so I was a lightweight. If I could go back and do it again, I went to play football. Just didn't make sense. But why didn't I run cross country? Like I know Brandon Sorensen, you know, ran cross country in high school. Uh, I've seen that story a couple of times. From a high school standpoint, you'll steal six wins in December based on conditioning. You'll, yeah. you'll win five or six matches based on conditioning. I don't know why I didn't run cross country. And when I look at football, I'm not saying like, and I wouldn't have been a good cross country runner. I, I'm not very fast. But it, the value there, it would have been, it would have been, it would have, there would have been lessons there. It would have been good for me. I would have went into the wrestling season in, in better shape. But you don't have to be a state, you don't have to be an all, all state football player or, or an all state wrestler. Or just, it will help your football immensely, like yeah. immensely. Yeah. So many great benefits. So many. Yeah. I, I, you know I mean, what? My nephew's doing that this year, and that's the whole. We went that whole conversation with my mom. My mom and I, oh, I hate football. Oh, you blew your knee out. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop some knowledge on you now. So I've only run eh, probably 15 5Ks, right? Uh, okay. And I ran track in high school. And I was on a all-state top eight team in the state of Ohio in the 4 by 800 meter relay. And then nice. I, qual I qualified a couple of times in the 1600 meter run <laughs> for the state, th state track me. I qualified for the state track me. Yeah. How fast Impressive. did I run the 1600 meter run? Chain sparks. To qualify for the state track meet in Ohio. How, how fast do you think I ran the 1600? 6 and a half. Seven? Six, six minutes and 30 seconds. You think that they qualified for the state track meet? I ran the 1600 meter run. In and four that's four. Minutes. That's a mile. That's I, yes, a mile. Right? I ran a mile. I ran a four minute. I'm going to say, I, I'm going to say you did it in six minutes. I'm going to say you did it in six minutes. I qualified slow with one of the slowest times in the state of Ohio. I ran a 434. Are you serious? Yeah. I was 190 pounds. That's, I missed that. That's freaking awesome. <laughs> yeah. Martin Floriani always brings it up. You're still running. And then um, <laughs> Jordan, Jimmy Jordan. Oh, I got a Jimmy Jordan story for you. You'll love this. Four so, and a half minutes, man. That's incredible. I didn't give you nearly enough credit. No, yeah. I qualified. I took 12th. I took 12th, 10th, 10th and 12th. And then we were a, a seventh in the four by 800 meter relay. So anyhow, so we're in a two minute 800, half mile, right? So um, I was just like this big guy that could run. My brother Ferd was like that too. So anyhow, um, I was down working Jordan's camp, and Jim Jordan is like a ravenous, of course, super competitive runner. And I'm like a freshman or sophomore in college, and they were like, oh, hey, you're, hey. Yeah, Jeff was kind of like, I think Jeff's like, oh, hey, run with Jim today, Zeb. I was like, okay. So um, – we go out and we run and we're kind of talking and we're, we're beating all the kids and um, we get to the final quarter mile and I had a real good kick. So we're talking and I just dust Jim Jordan, just dust him. 
gone. You gotta understand, I weigh 215 pounds, right? And I dust him. And if you know, he's like super nice guy, like over, like you can't be this nice. You're such a nice guy. Um, and he's like, Oh, Severino, I'm going to get you Severino. Oh, I'm going to get you. And I was like, you're probably not going to get me, but okay. So then I think we ran again, dusted him again. And then, um, I come the next day and Jeff was like, Miller, you're riding the bike. I was like, what? Why am I riding the bike? And you don't question Jeff Jordan. When you work for Jeff Jordan, you're, you just, that's not a thing. You don't question Jeff Jordan. Jeff Jordan says, ride the bike. You're riding the freaking bike. So I had to then <laughs> stay in the back and make sure that the final kid finished. So it was a good time. So I didn't get a chance. And he always asked me, hey, you still running? You're kind of big. You still running? And I'm like, yeah. I still run like two or three times a week and run like two, three miles. Really? Okay. Yeah. Go like uh, – but which is weird because I'm 250 pound guy and everyone's like, Oh, you're kind of fat. And I'm like, well, no, I was kind of fat when I was fast anyway. So it's kind of weird, but I think it's getting to the point though. I probably got to lose, you know, a good 30 pounds, 40 pounds. Um, so that I can okay. keep, my, keep my knee longer. Yeah. You got to do that, man. Pounding. That's a lot of, it's 250 pounds. Yeah. I mean, yep. do the math every time I'm hitting it, add up 250 to, you know, I'm taking four steps. That's thousand pounds of pounding on my knee. You know, yeah, I, I can't do it. I cannot run. I do. I do my road bike and I love it. I do not run. Yeah. Can't do it. Yeah. It's crazy that stuff. Is, Shane Spark. Shane Spark. Oh, yeah. You, you, yeah. Shane Spark. You got me fired up. Look at this. Look at this. I'm lathered up, man. I'm lathered oh. up. I'm all sweaty. <laughs> my, my barbarian apparel shirt. I'm all fired up. I'm ready to go. I want to go. Matt returned my, one of my kids is sleeping upstairs. You need that shower with the thin soap. Yeah. Yeah, hey, defend what you've built, you know. Do you have – Absolutely. Do you have any parting stories or parting shots for me, Shane Sparks? Do you have anything you want to share, any upcoming upcoming projects, anything you're doing? Where are we going to see you? Are we going to see you in the Big Ten Network? Are we going to see you covering wrestling every week? Are you, you the rambling man, the traveling man? Is it going to be Is it going to be 20 weeks solid of wrestling for you? What does the winner look like? Where are we going to see you? Yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait for the Big Ten season to kick in. So I'll be doing a lot on the Big Ten Network. Super excited about the opportunities there, and they've given me more. So I'm going to be doing a lot more, I think, from a social media standpoint, digitally. And, uh, hey, it's the best, you know, the best dual meets, do, best dual meets in the country. So I'm going, to, I'm going to do as much as I can. I love it. I love every single second of it. And I uh, can't wait. And, and every year, I think the Big Ten is like, ah, it can't get any better. It can't get any better than last year. It can't get any better. And it just keeps getting better. I mean, it just, it just blows my mind. It'll be a great – I mean, college wrestling, hopefully get a bunch of fans back. I'm hoping, you know, fingers crossed on that. We'll see how that shakes out. But, no, you'll, you'll be seeing a lot of me. I haven't gotten the schedule yet. I'm hoping, I'm hoping we do a bunch of stuff in November. You know, we'll see. And, uh, you know, five months. It's a long season. I hope I'm – if it's up to me, it'd be in a, you know, wrestling arena, you know, twice a week. So excited about that. What football games are left? You said you got two more, I think. Yeah, I got, I got two more guaranteed and uh, hoping to pick up a few more. I'm just, I mean, I, heck, I, I love this stuff. I mean, it's, yeah. it's just, a, it's a real thrill. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. I mean, just kind of taking it, like, like you said before, just day by day, you know, win today, focus on today. Tomorrow will present its, its new challenges. Worry about it tomorrow. So. All right. Yeah, I'm just real fortunate and always appreciate the support from everybody. I love it. I love it. I'm fired up. I'm going to go Matt return one of my kids, wake him up, and just Matt return him real hard. So kind of <laughs> Shane, thank you for coming on the Barbarian Hour. Check out Barbarian Apparel at barbarianapparel.com. Shane Sparks, stick around. Talk to you a little bit off camera here. I appreciate the time. And uh, we will catch hey, up thanks with so you much. down the road. Shane, you're the man. Hey, thanks, Zeb. Hello, wrestlers and coaches. I'm Teague Moore. I spent 20 years coaching at the Division I level in the NCAA, 15 of those years as a head coach. During that time, I helped a lot of wrestlers and parents navigate the recruiting process. I've now opened my own consulting business to do just that to help you navigate the recruiting process. There's a lot of unanswered questions. How do scholarships work? 
what program would be right for my son, or better yet, what coach would be right for my wrestler. I can help answer these and many other questions. Feel free to email me or call me at the information listed below, and we can set up your first consultation today. I look forward to working with you and helping you make the right choice.